Are you new to rotor flight? Do you want to spend countless upon countless of hours trying to learn how everything works? If you don't, this video is for you. My name is Bert Kammerer, and in this short video, I'm going to teach you how to go from knowing nothing about rotor flight to having a fully functional, ready to fly turnkey helicopter in the shortest amount of time possible. First things first, a disclaimer. This video assumes that you have a Nexus flabberless system, you have a RP3H receiver and a TX16S radio master transmitter. This tutorial and the files that I'm going to provide you with will not work on any other transmitter or flabberless system. In addition, you assume all responsibility for following these instructions correctly and testing your machine thoroughly before you proceed to fly. So I am providing you with a zip file. You can find the download link in the video description. In this zip file, you will find two directories. One directory has the contents for your transmitter and the other directory has the contents for your Nexus flabberless unit. Let's get started with the transmitter first. So I recommend you use an SD card reader as it makes things a lot easier. You don't have to, but this is what I actually recommend. First things first, take your transmitter, pop the uh, rubber cover at the bottom of the transmitter and remove your SD card. And get ready to mount the SD card on your SD card reader. So once you decompress the zip file, you're gonna end up with a directory. If you enter that directory, you're gonna see two directories. One is for the Nexus flabberless system and one is for the transmitter. So we're gonna focus on the transmitter now that you have that SD card removed from the transmitter and it plugged into your computer, you're gonna copy the entire contents of this no name directory, whatever is inside here on your SD card. All these files basically replace everything and it gives you a pre-configured model file with all the necessary telemetry options for an electric helicopter. It also gives you all the other goodies that you need, including the widgets, the Lua scripts, and much more. These files also install a very basic theme comprised of a carbon fiber looking background with white text. The screens are gonna be pre-configured and everything's gonna be ready to go. Before you do this step, please keep in mind that the entire contents of your transmitter will be completely wiped out. So I recommend backing up the contents of your existing micro SD card in case you want to revert back. So this is when you can actually decide if you want to get a brand new SD card, not to mess with the micro SD that came with your transmitter. Not only that, the one that came with your transmitter is really crappy to be honest. So you can get a little bit of a faster SD card. The limitation is make sure you don't exceed 32 gigabytes in size or the transmitter won't be able to read it. Once you've copied the contents to the SD card, you simply insert the SD card back on your transmitter. And power the transmitter on. You got a nice splash screen right here. And then it's going to give me a warning. You want this switch all the way towards you and this switch down. This is throttle hold. This is arm. Anyhow, we have a very basic screen with maximum amperage during the flight, minimum voltage during the flight. We also have the battery voltage of the actual battery inside the transmitter. Then you have RPMs, you have the BEC voltage, the amperage or current utilization, and then you have the temperature of the ESC. On this side at the top here, we have all the battery information for the flight pack, the voltage, the percentage, and we have this set to auto detect, so it'll detect the number of cells and it'll show you the individual cell voltage right here. It'll also show you how many milliamps you've used during that flight and it's set to start vibrating, giving you haptic feedback when you get to about 30% battery utilization. Also here you have the name of the helicopter. This name is being pulled from rotor flight. 
This is the setting in the configurator we're going to get to here in a minute. And then you have a flight log that shows the number of flights. This little widget here has a little bit of a bug. It starts at seven. Don't worry about it. Once you get to flight number eight and on, it's going to start logging the flights, eight, nine, ten, and so forth. And it'll tie those flights to the helicopter. So if you switch from, say, a Goblin to a T-Rex or something else, this will show you the new helicopter name and the flight counter will match the number of flights on that particular helicopter. As you scroll to the next screen, you have the cell voltage, the minimum cell voltage during that flight, which you can see when you land, the maximum RPM for the rotor, and the maximum RPM for the tail rotor. And then you also have a very basic timer just for reference purposes. Now on this setup, this is your throttle hold. This is in hold all the way towards me. This is in run all the way away from me. You can see that when I put it to run, the timer starts counting. When I put it back in hold, the timer stops. And the center position is your auto rotation bell out. So if you ever land and you want to take off again once you're on the ground, make sure that you bring this all the way towards you because if you're in the middle position as you do an auto rotation and you land and you go all the way forward, it's going to spool up almost instantly and it could be very dangerous. So again, throttle hold right here. And then as we move to this side, we have, this is the flight modes or banks as we used to call them with V-Bar. This is basically profiles. Profile one, profile two, profile three is all the way towards me. This is the arming switch. This is disarmed and this is armed. And this is the rate switch. This will change your rates. I always leave it in rates three. That's where I fly the most often. I have different rates. So if I want somebody else to fly my heli and I want to lower the, the rates, then I can go to rate two, rate one. It's an optional feature, but you can use it if you want. And uh, yeah, that's we have it right here. The first thing you have to do is calibrate the transmitter. So to do that, you're going to go to the Sys menu right here. You're going to click on that icon right there. That takes you to the hardware section. You're going to scroll down until you see calibration. Click on calibration. This is going to ask you to center all the sticks. And once they're all center, it's going to ask you to agree and confirm by pressing enter, meaning you can push down on this. And then you have to move your sticks up and down. You should move the sliders up and down. And the same with these pots right here, S1 and S2. And once you're done with that, you click confirm and now you're calibrated. That is very important that you do that because we've changed basically the entire radio configuration. Another thing that you should do is go here to Sys and go to the Express LRS Lua and basically make sure that you're at 333 hertz and 132 because that is what this will work with with the Nexus file that I'm providing. Some people argue this is too slow. They like to run D500, which is technically a thousand hertz. To be honest with you, I've been flying this setup right here. I don't notice that it is slow. I'm, I'm happy that other people can notice it. But for me, this works and is very safe to run. I have no fail saves. I have no issues. I fly around cell phone towers. Never a problem. Anyway, that concludes everything for the transmitter. Let's go ahead and talk about the Nexus flabberless system now. So before we load the file onto the Nexus, we're going to take our receiver. This is the RP3H receiver, and we're going to do a super easy, quick bind. Uh, there's more advanced ways to bind these, but this is the easiest, most simple way to bind this receiver. This is the right cable you need. That's the receiver. Plug it in. And then you're going to plug in that receiver into port A on the Nexus flavorless unit. Once that's done, you're going to supply power. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this in bind mode by plugging it and unplugging it very quickly three times. Let me see if I can do it. You're going to see how the LED will change. So one, two, three. And now it's in bind mode. You can see it blinking twice there. So once it's in bind mode, go back to your transmitter. Go to Sys, go to Express LRS. We were there just earlier. And then we're going to go all the way down here to where it says bind. I'm going to click on that. And now it's bound. And how can you tell it's bound? You can tell it in two different ways. You can see the LED is now steady. It's not flashing. And then if you exit this by holding this button and you go back to the main screen, you can see now that we have an actual bar right here showing that we have established a connection to the Nexus. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to actually flash the Nexus and then we're going to load that file that I provided you with. 
onto the Nexus itself. So you plug it in and you're gonna go ahead and download Rotor Flight Configurator version 2.1.1. The link is in the video description. And then you're gonna click on Update Firmware. When you click on that, click on Detect and it'll detect the system you have. It should say Nexus underscore F7. And then you're gonna pick the firmware that you need. For this case, we're gonna use 4.4.0. The file was extracted from a device that has 4.4.0. I'm not sure if it'll work on 4.4.1, but either way, I recommend this version. Once you're loaded there, I recommend that you select full chip erase, regardless of whether the unit is new or not. And then normally you would have to click on load firmware online and it's going to load it. And then you're going to click on flash. And it's first going to erase what's in there, if anything, and then it's gonna start flashing. And I'm gonna speed up the video here a little bit. And as you can see, it says programming successful. And then we're just gonna go ahead and click connect. And we're connected to the Nexus. The first thing you're gonna see is that the accelerometer is enabled, but it's not calibrated. So we're gonna go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer. In order to do that, you go to the setup section here, and you're gonna take the Nexus, and you're gonna place it on a very flat surface. Once you're sure that the Nexus is not moving, it's steady, and it's on a flat surface, you're going to click here where it says Calibrate Accelerometer. And it's done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load up the file. So we're going to go to CLI, and we're going to click on Load from File, and we're going to find that file that you downloaded inside the Nexus directory, and it should look like this double click on it and click on execute and this will load the entire configuration this this will get you about 70 to 80 percent there once it's done doing that you can just click on connect this is going to disconnect you and now we're connected we're calibrated and some things to keep in mind here so we already did the calibration so now we go to configuration keep in mind that this file assumes that you're using a hobby wing esc with its built-in governor. In other words, we're not using the rotor flight governor. I prefer to do it this way as it requires less tuning and the hobby wing governor works exceptionally well. Also, this assumes that your ESC is a V5 and that you're using the hobby wing telemetry cable and that it is plugged in to the DSM port on top of your Nexus unit. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and name your model and then you have to decide if you're gonna install the Nexus with the pins facing back or facing forward. If the pins are facing back, you can leave this number here at 180. If the pins are gonna be facing forward, you need to change this setting to zero. Every time you make a change, you have to save and reboot. The next thing you have to go to the power section and you have to enter your cell capacity, whatever capacity you use on your battery, say 5,000 milliamps, say this is 6S, and then again, save. In this case, I don't think it needs to reboot. And then you have to go to the motor section. And in the motor section, you have to teach your ESC what the minimum and maximum setting is for throttle. I recommend you watch my other video. I'm putting links to the description that take you straight to that section so you can learn how to do this. While in the motor section, make sure that you enter the main rotor gear ratio and the tail rotor gear ratio and you also enter the main motor pull count as well then you're going to go to the servo section and in here you're going to go ahead and set center for all your servos you're going to make sure that you reverse the servo if you need to again i'm posting a link directly to each one of the sections on the description to this video then you have to go to the mixer tab and you have to review all the settings here in the mixer tab especially those pertaining to the main rotor geometry and the swatch plate trims as well as tail rotor settings. Then you're gonna go and check your rates. Uh, I recommend you leave this default. This is your center sensitivity, it's self-explanatory. This is the maximum roll and flip rate, pitch and roll. And of course your yaw, your rudder uh, deflection, your tail pirouette speed, and of course your collective for maximum as well as center sensitivity. I recommend you make these two the same. You really don't want a weird feeling where the center sensitivity for collective is different than the maximum rate as that will make your collective non-linear. Then after that, you're gonna go to the profiles right here. 
and the primary profile is profile three because that's where I fly the most often. That would be the equivalent to bank three on VVAR, for example. But I would make sure that you, if you mess with any of these, that you mess with the other ones. Keep in mind, this governor settings 80 is 80% 80 throttle to your ESC. That would be on bank three or profile three. 70% would be on profile two and 60% will be on profile one. And you remember when I showed you the auto rotation bell out on the switch and the transmitter, that was profile four, and that is a 27% because the hobby wing knows that it's not at a complete zero throttle. So when you release that auto rotation bell out switch, you go to run, it'll spool up very, very quickly. This is why I mentioned that when you land, if you're gonna take off again, to make sure that you're in full throttle hold. Now it's important to keep in mind that these PIDs will work for most helicopters ranging from a 420 all the way up to a 700 and it'll get you very very close. In fact you should be quite happy with the way the helicopter flies with these settings if your helicopter is mechanically sound. This file already has all the information it needs for the filters for example that are here under the gyro section so you don't need to mess with any of this and, and again most of these settings are already preloaded in here the modes are set to match. Uh, the arm is set to match that switch as I showed you before. And then the adjustments here are set to make the changes for your profiles as well as your rates. So you don't need to mess with any of this. This is already all pre-configured and ready to go for you. Once you're done with all these steps, you're ready to go fly. I highly recommend that you move the helicopter and double check that this helicopter here is moving correctly to the left, to the right, you know, pitch back, pitch forward, yaw in all directions and that it matches what your helicopter is doing. And I also recommend that here in the receiver section that if you move your transmitter stick to the right, the heli will move to the right, left, left, back and forth, and so on and so forth. So those are extremely important checks that you have to do before you even attempt to go fly. And you remember when I showed you the name on the transmitter? So the name on the transmitter will be pulled from whatever you put in here. This one says Goblin, so when you power on the transmitter, you will see that instead of saying electric heli, it'll change the Goblin. And again, the number of flights will follow that. If I load up another Nexus unit, and that other one is called Tron Dynamic, for example, then the name on the transmitter here will change to Tron Dynamic. So yes, that's all it took. So before you go fly, again, follow my advice, please. Make sure the helicopter is moving in the right direction. And also that when you move the sticks, they're also showing the helicopter moving in the right direction. So I hope this was useful. Again, I'm putting the links to those specific sections in the description to this video. And I hope this video was useful to you. Thanks for watching.